Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the newest episode of Bachelor Universe Podcast. Yes, the fourth episode of The Bachelor is behind us, and there's a lot to talk about and review. So, today's episode did not include Jimmy Kimmel. That was last week. Uh, Back to normal at the house. Things started off with a camping date. Yep, a camping date was... Something we should have expected. I mean, he is a farmer after all, and you're probably going to be going camping with him a lot. The camping date was the first one of the night. Uh, The lucky women that got to go to that had a great time, especially Kelsey, who looked like she would rather be in hell than doing camping. Guess who embraced that? Of course, Caitlin embraced it. Uh, She seemed to hit it off with Chris and really take it up a notch by removing her pants and going skinny dipping. Now, of all the people, I'm not surprised that was Caitlyn to do that. She's a skinny dipping type, and she's just a wild, crazy type. That's what we're finding out from scene to scene, not even episode to episode. Uh, She's just one of those crazy... Not not so much crazy, just those, I don't know if she's wife material, but she's definitely got something, and that's Caitlyn for you. So she, of course, skinny dips, uh, reveals her amazing booty, I'm guessing. Chris got to see it, I didn't, unfortunately. And, of course, that got her points with him. Then, of course, we had chaos as some of these girls tried to build tents and it just wasn't working out ashley i was one of them yeah um not happening uh speaking of ashley i she made quite the impression on chris she went into his tent yeah a girl taking it matters into her own hands and literally sabotaging herself so she goes into the tent tries to explain to chris that she is a virgin does not come off that way of course chris is confused more than ever by what she's trying to say how she's innocent and that she doesn't want him to see her in a negative light and it just doesn't work because she doesn't tell her that she's a virgin she doesn't tell him she maybe doesn't tell herself either with her who knows so disappointed ashley means a lot of craziness that's gonna ensue further on in the episode the impression rose was given to caitlin of course with a potentially fine fine booty why wouldn't you not get a rose common sense chris gives it to her so that concluded fun i guess would they would call it i don't think anyone really had fun uh camping thing but it did not go according to plan smoothly as expected because kelsey was not having it and that was her first look and sign of kind of kelsey having some attitude and really 
just uh, not putting up with it. She seemed like a complainer. Uh, she did not like camping. B stung her when she was doing her interview on camera uh, from the campsite and uh, stung her right almost between her legs. Uh, go figure. Lucky B. Yeah. <laughs> so Kelsey gives us the first sign of potential issues looking down the line. Finally, okay, so that ends. Back at the house, the remaining girls get a visit from Chris's sisters. Yes, three of Chris's sisters basically do a interrogation, one-on-one -on -one sit down with the girls in the house. And the kicker was that the one that they pick would go on a date with Chris. So it was up to his sisters and basically they just had to sit down trying to get to know the girls and pick the best one that they served a date. Fortunately, Chris's sisters have good taste because Jade was the winner, if you want to call her that. She got picked by Chris's sisters to go on a date. Uh, that's good news for Jade. That's been obviously one of my personal favorites. Not only is she stunning, but I think she's a real sleeper. I think Chris has kind of overlooked her to this point. She's got it going on. And I think the sisters were impressed that she is a pretty much a country girl from Nebraska that really developed her own business and moved out to L.A. and kind of made it on her own. So I think the sisters might have seen some parallel to Chris with um, with him and his hardworking ways and being a smart businessman himself. Smart choice. Uh, the date was a, a reincarnation of Cinderella. And what I mean by that was that they had people coming to the house. I guess they call them fairy godmothers. And they really pimped out Jade, really dressed her up like Cinderella. Of course, there was obvious mention of the Cinderella movie that's coming out in March. Boy, did Disney milk it. I mean, you know ABC had to. I mean, this episode could have been sponsored, paid. This whole season could have been ported by the Cinderella movie because we saw about 10 plugs in a span of five minutes for the Cinderella movie. So clearly there was no ulterior motives. But Jade got a makeover. Looked like Cinderella. And then we see a shot of Chris practicing his ballroom dancing in an actual ballroom. Like a fancy one, look like a castle type of thing. I mean, they really went out all the way with this, uh, this whole gimmick. So Jade obviously was thrilled, as I'm sure every woman or girl, their inner child definitely came to the forefront on all of these women wanting to be Cinderella. Apparently, Ashley I, no surprise, was really, really devastated over that. It's like putting your tooth under the pillow when you're a kid and not getting anything for it. Multiply that by 20,000 and that's how disappointed. Throw in a hole, uh, not getting a Christmas present, getting maybe coal for Christmas. That's how Ashley I reacted to the fact that she was not picked to be Cinderella and go on this date. So yeah, uh, heartbreaking, uh, allegedly, for Ashley I. Back to the date, Jade got picked up in a fancy car, taken to the date. Uh, Chris was waiting there, and of course, they shared a romantic meal slash drinks uh, in a fairy tale like setting. Of course, they got to see the trailer for the Cinderella movie. I mean... Wow, what are the odds of that? A quick note on that, not to be bashing or anything like that, but boy, the Cinderella and this Prince Charming look pretty old and bad. Not looking promising for and they're British too. Nothing against British people or anything, but it just did not look right. Potential bust at the box office. But that you can check out that review on the movie blog, which is a site I also write for. 
never mind that. Back to the date. So then they get a dance together, and that was fairly romantic. And the kicker was that at midnight, Jade has to run off, just like in a fairy tale. She gets to run away, and Prince Farming can't do anything about it. She did have some glass-like, glass-looking sli slippers, that what they call them, shoes. Okay, that's what Jane had, but she looked bomb. I mean, wow, she looked fantastic. There's, uh, She's one of my favorites to begin with, so multiply that now with a makeover. Jade is working it. So that was a cute little uh, date. I'm sure everyone watching at home, every woman especially, and was reverted back to you know being a 10-year-old girl, uh, imagining that they were on that date. It's a cute little touch. Obviously, a lot of promotion involved, but that's what it was. Jade got a heck of a date. Chris seemed to enjoy it too. He had mentioned how Jade was under the radar, and you could tell until this point she is in his mind she is on his mind and he is not going to be taking her for granted back in the house we're waiting another group date the group date at the house the women that they were waiting for this fun great group date well they had to go to a obstacle course type of thing yeah it was uh one of those active activity type of things. They got flown out to San Francisco to go and participate in this event. Of course, Jillian was involved in this event. So we know how that goes. When Jillian is involved, that means uh, no one else has a chance. So the Hulk slash Jillian, she's really Miss Hulk. And there's no doubt about it. That girl cannot keep away from flexing i don't get it i mean clearly she's really really proud of her muscles and that's all she's kind of got going for herself uh so yeah obviously no one else had a chance to win this obstacle course jillian trounced them all in this muck fest as they call it it was just dirty they were all dressed in wedding dresses so everyone thought they had something fancy oh no they were pretty much in the mud the entire time and jillian just like a champ destroyed him no one had a chance and that's what it was you get a rose from that and and you know what to chris's credit he did participate in it he actually Oh, but Britt looked like a mess. He he helped out some of these girls. Becca was involved. So he felt bad for him. And he obviously jumped into the mud and did whatever they did. So everyone looked like hell pretty much at the end of it. Jillian gets the rose. Not the rose, technically. She gets the one-on-one -on -one, an opportunity to get the rose. And that would change everything. So they did get whisked away to use a fancy word to describe that, to some rooftop type of place with great scenery and they had a romantic dinner. And uh, that's where Jillian goes uh, from ultimate uh, the Hulk to ultimately self-absorbed, obsessed, and kind of loony, which we suspect her to be. And she just starts going on about her fitness and workouts and all kinds of craziness. Uh, you could see Chris's head uh, spinning, uh, his eyes rolling. And had he been a cartoon character, not in a Cinderella themed movie, uh, you would probably have uh, steam coming out of his ears and head and all that. Because there's no way anyone on this earth would keep up with what Jillian was talking about. The random nonsense about her fitness and how she's proud of it and how she destroys people and how well, she's the Hulk. Obviously, we know she destroys people. But that's all that was going on. And you could just see poor Chris struggling, struggling to deal with this situation because... Jillian is on takeover mode. 
would this be the first time that someone doesn't get a rose? Well, the frustration that she put him through. This poor guy had no choice, but he took the rose and pretty clearly explained to everyone that she didn't even give him a chance to talk or care what he had to say. And he had proceeded to tell her that there was no connection between them and that she would not be receiving a rose. So there we are. For the first time, Chris actually holds back a rose and doesn't give one. He's been known to just hand out roses just as much as access corn, probably, uh, that he has on his farm. Uh, and first time, Chris is manning up. He finally takes a stance and he doesn't, I mean, this is the guy that kisses everyone. He does not say no to anyone. For the first time, he said no to Jillian. And Jillian did not get a rose, which, of course, preceded by her crying and tears streaming down her cheeks, saying how she just was nervous and how she didn't know what to say and how awkward this was. And I agree, it was awkward. Chris seemed to be stuck on this whole notion that the setting was so romantic and for her not to step up was just the dagger. Which I kind of agree with him. For once, Chris is going with his gut and that's what needs to happen. And off went Jillian. So there's our first elimination in a sense that first one-on-one -on -one that didn't receive a rose and he's been giving roses to everyone. So good for him. Good for Chris finally manning up and going with his gut. Back in the house, the rose ceremony is drawing near. And of course, you have the last minute rush of everyone trying to talk to him and get his attention. And that's where this episode kind of twisted. It was a very mellow episode to this point. But you had Britt have a little one-on-one -on -one session which really upset Chris because surprisingly that's one of his favorites that he can't get away without kissing but there was a lot of tension in the house losing momentum to Caitlin and there's no doubt Caitlin is running away which was kind of Brit's situation and it was her spot uh, and she was just basically voicing her frustrations to Chris. He gives her a rose for it. Her insecurities really kind of set Chris off. And for the first time this season, we see it just couldn't tell off this girl. He was trying to find things and, and feeling bad for someone. You wish Chris had a PR person at that point. Or where's Chris Harrison when you need him? Bumbling and bumbling and fumbling and speechless. Sounding like a jerk. Uh, but clearly he was put basically her alone time with him. Just to complain about Caitlyn and her securities. Shocking thing is that front runner he is finding herself on a back burner. And Caitlyn is just rising to the top. Of course our night isn't over or set without wreck that we call Ashley I who is officially the crazy diva in the house um, she's taking over that reign says more than you can even imagine so Ashley I is she's a virgin we get a, another confession of another virgin in the house that's kind of surprising but awkwardly and in a weirdest way tells him that she's a virgin. He actually acknowledges it and tells her that he has a lot of respect for her for being a virgin and mess, thinking she's going to get eliminated and worried about who knows what. There's no denying this guy is there for the right reason and he proceeds to kind of tell and that he is putting himself out there. So the rose ceremony uh, starts off with Whitney getting the first rose. Disney princess anymore. For some reason, she's she's growing. And her a Disney princess anymore. I guess Jade could be that. Uh, Whitney gets the first rose. 
<laughs> the mudding competition. That was also the muck fest. But um, yeah, that was a, done for a good cause for us. A rose. Megan gets a rose. Samantha gets a. Wait, who? I just see her at rose ceremonies. Uh, she doesn't. Tanta, I guess she's on a show. Uh, she gets a rose, so expect to see her next week. Kelsey gets a rose, obviously, and Becca getting one of them. So divergence go through, uh, but there. And then we have Nikki. No, I have no idea who Nikki is on the show, and that's the first time I actually knew her name because I had no idea. Who Thank goodness I was DVRing the show. Finally knew that she was actually part of the show. So, Nikki, congratulations on lasting this long. Yeah, no comment. Uh, she's just apparently made Bachelor women who are on the show, but you would never know. Ashley S., who for unknown reasons is still on the show, trying to creep show uh, that we didn't know about. And the final rose goes to Britt. There'd be chaos if he actually sent her and shock all over of course she gets another chance he did make it dramatic though in the earlier episodes by kind of keeping these some of these girls then giving him the rose just like miss drunken god blasted and she made it through we already forgot her name right julia and uh nikki who in common uh, names that you would expect at this point. It's surprising that there's still a lot of women in this house that you don't really see dead weight, I guess, in the house that women just haven't done much where she is. And the exit uh, interviews were great. And uh, Chris actually did one of the most sincere, nicest things of the season. Really, um, he did this whole pounding of his chest with her hands um kind of weird but kind of cool at the same time so he basically chris had mentioned that you know she deserves a great man and he had no doubt she's going to get what was was nice to see it just shows and reaffirms once again that he is there for the right reasons he is a real genuine so good luck for julia it's the girl the most normal girl in the house who was I was like all into hiking and fitness in the introductory clip in the first episode and yet she hated camping that was surprising basically the backstabber with a smile on her face and we will see Kels manipulating next week you will see girls turning against her there was a bit of flipped it that way but Apparently, there is a lot going on of reaction, crying on the floor. We have no idea what's going to happen, but Carly takes it to another level. That may lead to something since Chris closes the doors. Could he overnights? Carly, of all people. Hmm. That will be an episode of The Bachelor. No doubt about it. Next week will be epic and probably one of the most dramatic. This season has been a whirlwind, really. But they definitely have some characters. And next week will reaffirm it all. Make sure to check out the next episode also. Um, that's ChicagoNow.com. And you can find Bachelor Universe just blog with this podcast on it and my articles synopsis and my thoughts on the shows um the week show that's visit my blog you like it comment please comment comments are always well more fans and more eyes are on the podcast and the blog definitely download on itunes and stitcher anyways that's it for the week four of the bachelor i will talk to you guys later this week it is going to be the week of kelsey and that is going to be fun. See ya.